never wanted to get divorced. I'm not opposed to the idea per se. I just don't like changes. It was sometime in January 2015 when my now ex, Al, told me that he didn't want to do our marriage anymore. Apparently, it was my fault. I had changed too much. He had hoped that I would stay in academia, which is where we met, but instead I chose to return to the arts. He had assumed I'd have the same schedule as I did when I was a grad student, but I was finally hitting my stride as a theater professional, which meant working nights and weekends. He'd hoped at least I could have had a more stable income, but my dream mandated the instability of being a gig worker. And that was it. He dumped me, blocked me from social media, and suddenly my life, friend circles, living situation, all changed in a manner of days. Believe me when I say, I don't like change. Growing up, we almost never moved. I stayed with my folks until my mid twenties, until I absolutely had to move to do the rightful Indian thing, get a PhD from an Ivy League school. <laughs> and when it came to it, I didn't even really want to get married. I would have happily stayed partnered with my ex without the marriage paperwork. But when the matter of permanent residency came up, I kind of had to. Al's immigration paperwork was being processed around the same time that I needed to process mine. You're fortunate if you think the alphanumerics L1, F1, H1B are elements in the periodic tables. They aren't. They are highly stratified, hard to understand without an expensive immigration lawyer, immigration categories that you must fit into if you are to stay in the United States of America. As a theater teaching artist from India working with a small nonprofit, I didn't have a hope in hell of becoming a permanent resident anytime soon. But Al, a European professor, could manage to get a green card in six months. So that was my decision. One marriage, please, in return for the right to remain in the United States. <laughs> and so began the next chapter of my married life. We tried to maintain status quo and, and say we were each other's partners. Um, but when our colleagues in San Diego then started to assume we're in same-sex relationships and somewhere along the line we had to counter that we weren't, it all got awkward because... San Diego. <laughs> we started transitioning to my husband and my wife. Honestly, I had no idea how to be someone's wife. I never had a roadmap for a happy marriage. My parents' marriage was as functional as Prince Charles and Lady Di back in the day. Good people individually, but terrible when they were around each other. I'm not sure I ever heard them being in a conversation for more than a few minutes before an argument would erupt. My sister and I would secretly fantasize about my parents getting a divorce, but they never did. Striving to go for the opposite, I made it my job to make, keep my marriage peaceful. The key was to avoid conflict and blow ups at all costs. Even if it meant we eventually stopped communicating. It was a worthy effort, but the experiment failed with a capital F. There I was, 11 years of faithful monogamy, checking the divorce box now on my hiring forms. It took under $100 to get married and several times the amount to get divorced. The cost of heartbreak and grief is well priceless. A year and a half passed and the grief gave way to occasional dating. But when my 40th birthday coincided with Trump's inauguration and the premature passing of my dear aunt, suddenly my being had a very particular response. Life is short, friends. If women's rights were going to be taken away soon, it was now or never. This divorcee was going to become a total, unapologetic hoe. <laughs> so yes, the post-divorce healing that followed President Trump's election was indeed sexual occurring in bedrooms, living rooms, national parks, <laughs> caves, recently popular co-ed bathrooms in San Francisco, abandoned hallways. I was the quintessential 40-something perimenopausal Indian Ali Wong. 
I was the farthest I could be from monogamy that I had enjoyed for so many years. My adopted homeland America and I were on parallel journeys in 2017 and 18, uncharted territories, a constant flow off. I can't believe that happened. There were no rules. It wasn't until I met Ray, smack in September 2018, a few months before the midterm elections, that I felt a traditional tug from the heart. It was rather a shock. Ray could not have been more different than I. He was like this all-American blonde Superman. He spoke a particular brand of English that I didn't understand. He said, pumpkin a lot. He wore cologne and sports jackets on dates. He opened the door for me. He was constantly sending me memes and videos of himself in the car, in the shower, in his office, in the gym. He proudly shared that he had been fat most of his life and through the church of CrossFit had transformed himself and was now a total zaddy. He had zero college degrees but possessed more unapologetic Gen X white cis male privilege than I had ever encountered in my whole life. I could have sworn that the birds chirped and all the animals cheered when he woke up every morning. Now, if he had one weakness, it was he wasn't very good in bed. But boy, did he have the confidence. When I tried to address it with him, he just threw up his hands, shrugged his shoulders and said, yeah, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> But I was his adventure into the great brown unknown. And he was my exotic other. Somewhere along the line, I guessed that he may have voted for Donald J. Trump. And he finally fessed up, pointing out that in his defense, he wasn't a Republican, he was a libertarian. <laughs> Wait, what? I think that's worse. But by that time, I was deep in the throes of this very unusual pairing. While families were sparring over politics at Thanksgiving dinners all over America, I, an immigrant, told myself that it would be my very bipartisan contribution to U.S. democracy to work across the aisle in the bedroom. I'm going to take credit for the fact that Ray said he forgot to vote in the 2018 midterm elections. <laughs> yeah, as a permanent resident, I still couldn't vote. But I fought on the front lines. I prevented one Trump enthusiast from voting. I had bad sex with a libertarian for way longer than I should have. For you, America! Yeah, yes, surprise, surprise, that relationship didn't last. Um, by our six month anniversary, communication started to fade. And when I confronted him, he told me he wanted to start seeing someone else. It stung, but somewhere deep inside, I knew that the situation ship needed to end sooner or later. Second time around though, of being dumped, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was never the initiator of breakups. I was a textbook case of repeating my parents' mistakes. Compromise hard just to keep a mediocre thing going. It was a worthy, albeit painful lesson. It wasn't long before Ray's new lady friend dumped him and he got the shingles. <laughs> he got back in touch to make amends and I accepted his apology. We are still friends on social media, and he continues to be my one and only libertarian contact. <laughs> I wish I could say that I learned my lesson just then. In the years that followed, I stayed in some jobs for far too long, in some problematic living situations for longer than I should have, and definitely in some pandemic clothing options for way too long. <laughs> yes, I have had a hard time breaking up with the status quo, even when it became a roadblock to my happiness. But here we are in 2024, and I am ready to welcome change, even if it's inconvenient. I finally braved the paperwork and bureaucracy and became an American citizen. 
This November will be the first opportunity I have to influence an, a U.S. election as a voter. Once more, I am ready to report for duty, America. Let's stir it up. Thank you.